Hello everyone and welcome to the Car Code YouTube channel. I've got another exciting new car review for you today. I'm going to be doing a review on the facelifted Ford Cougar Hybrid. If you like new car reviews, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And first of all, I want to say a huge thanks to Pi Motors Ford and Kendall for making this video possible. Very helpful with my videos, supporting the channel for a couple of years now. Check out their links in the description down below. I've put their number down there as well. So if you've got any questions about the new Cougar, they'll be able to give you a hand. With that, let's Let's get on with the video. Should we start by taking the Cougar for a drive? I like the push button start and they've switched it over for the UK side. And auto hold remembers that it was on, which is great. Just like on my Volkswagen Golf. All the brands don't do that. You have to turn it on each time. Not a fan of the rotary dial for the gear selector, but that's something that you will get used to. So this is still the 2.5 litre Duratec engine from Ford, but it's a self-charging, it's the FHEV. It's got a 1.1 kilowatt hour battery, which isn't actually that big. Powerful, 180 PS, and I have no issue with the power delivery. Hybrids have gotten so good now with the ECVT, which this has got. It's not got a normal gearbox. This is the facelift now with the SYNC 4 infotainment screen, a tweaked interior and exterior styling, and overall it does feel quite familiar to what we've seen in the Cougar and the Focus. We'll see what miles per gallon has to kind of average as we go. And the Cougar is agile car as well, quite a sporty riding vehicle. These are quite nice with these 18 inch alloys on it. It's not too firm, nice ride. Suspension isn't too hard over bumps. I think this is a perfect blend. Sportier SUV, I like the way it looks, I like the way it drives. There's not much really to not like. They've added a lot of kit as standard now, which you don't get on other vehicles. But Ford have got the perfect blend and I think of it where not every trim is going to have the same thing because you can opt for things as well but then lots of features are standard it doesn't roll much in the corners like a normal SUV would do hybrid SUVs quite often don't bring you that driving enjoyment so the CRV for example the suspension on that is quite squishy which is great because it's nice and comfortable but you don't feel like you have an engaged driving experience as much as you do it in something like this this is more like what you get in a Honda Civic that type of drive it's nice as well that they've got a full hybrid because the Tiguan doesn't have that available. They have a mild hybrid and they have plug-in, but they don't have full self-charging. I wouldn't need a car this big. It is a big car, but it's nice and it's that manageable size where you don't feel like you're in something unmanageable. These 18-inch wheels are perfect. You still have a bit of a firm ride, but not uncomfortable by any means. It doesn't feel like the most modern car on the market but I like it more than the Sportage. I think it has more of a personality and definitely more heritage than those vehicles. So. It makes a bit of a growl there, but no, it does actually pick up a lot of speed and better than some smaller hybrid engines. The 2.5 litre is quite a unique thing, really. Most models are a 1.8 or a 2 litre hybrid powertrain. So 2.5 is giving you that smoother feel, no turbocharger in it. Most hybrids don't. So many different manufacturers have different ways that their hybrids work, and lots of them are actually very similar. So I'm driving in EV at the moment, and it does that where it can. It's very comfortable. Steering wheel is nice size as well. The screen is like kind of dead center, so it'd be nice if it was facing more towards me, like it does on the Qashqai, and it does on the Tiguan, but it's nothing majorly bad. It's the 13.2 inch center infotainment screen. So it's saying I've covered 3.4 miles and 1.5 miles has been electric. That's pretty good. With a self-charging hybrid, people often forget. They'll say, how many miles will it do in EV mode? Self-charging hybrids don't really work like that. The reason it's a self-charging hybrid is to just aid your fuel economy. You've only got pure electric miles if you're in a plug-in hybrid. And the plug-in hybrid has now got an official range of 42 miles up from the 30 something on the pre-facelift. So that's very good, but it's still not quite up there with the 100 kilometers or 62 miles that we are starting to see from Volkswagen or the 50 miles official that we see from the CRV plug-in hybrid. However, this car undercuts both of those vehicles. So I've been driving it for four and a half miles now and I've been averaging 45 miles per gallon, which is really good. It's just going up and up and up. This around town can do very well. 
comfortable. I love these Alcantara seats. This is the ST line model. This is good if you don't want a plug-in hybrid vehicle. Your self-charging makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. They might live in a flat. Oh, road works ahead, it's telling me. Okay, thank you. 4.9 miles I've done, 3.1 miles of that has been electric. That is very impressive actually. So it does do a lot of its miles on electric, which is surprising because it's got such a small battery, but because it's got a big engine, it charges it very quickly. So it charges and depletes all very quickly, which is good actually, because under braking, so going down a hill or whatever, it'll charge the battery full very quickly and then it'll use it and then it'll charge it very quickly. So in a way, it makes sense to have a smaller battery on board, right? Also a little bit less heavy, so smooth as well to drive. You don't have like a regen braking mode. You have a low mode though, a low gear. Bigger wheels on the Cougar are a bit firmer, but even on the 20 inch wheels that I reviewed last time, it was absolutely fine. It's not got as much regen braking as other cars do, but as soon as you come off the accelerator, that battery is charging quickly. What have I been averaging now? Do you want to know? 5.7 miles, 3.8 electric, 50.6 miles per gallon. So now we're going to quickly test the performance. I'm going to strap the tripod in. This one is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 9.1 seconds, not too slow, especially when it's focusing on fuel economy. If you go for the all wheel drive model though, that does 0 to 60 in 8.3 seconds. They're all pretty nippy. Even the 1.5 EcoBoost is 9.5 seconds, 0 to 62, which is fine. And honestly, the fact it's a CVT is not bothering me. I actually quite enjoy it because it's not stepping up gears. Sometimes cars with a normal, like automated manual, if you like, like a DSG even, normally they're great, like they're fine. Sometimes though, I can find them just to be so annoying because they'll be changing up or down when I don't want them to. That is plenty enough performance for anyone. I think people often are spoiled with high performance vehicles that they think nine seconds to 60 is slow. I know there's no diesel anymore and people might not like the idea that there's no diesel, but that's just the way the world's going. I do get it because some people like having a diesel car. In total, there's four different powertrains available on the Cougar, not available on all models though three of which are hybrids. Let's start off with the normal petrol. You get a 1.5 EcoBoost turbocharged petrol engine with a six-speed manual transmission. That's available on Titanium, ST-Line and T-Line X. It's not available, unfortunately, on the active model. Moving to hybrids, you go to this one. This is a 180 PS FHEV self-charging hybrid powertrain with the 2.5 litre Joratec engine. That pumps out 180 PS very nippy, it does the job. You can actually get four wheel drive as well. It's the same engine, same setup almost with 183 PS, but that powers all four wheels. So that's a little bit different and good if you do want a four wheel drive option. Last but not least, you have the plug-in hybrid model, which is Europe's best selling plug-in hybrid vehicle. And that now has upgraded power, 243 PS over the 225 PS on the pre-facelift vehicle. So you can see there, that's the engines available. Main focus on hybrid now, a lot more than previously. You've got a normal strut, not a hydraulic, unfortunately. Okay, so let's have a look at the exterior design on the updated facelift Cougar. And as you can see, things have been tweaked slightly just to give it a bit more of a modern appearance. To the front of the vehicle, you've got LED headlights with this daytime running light signature. You can actually get the coast to coast, as they call it, that goes through all the way through here as well, as an optional extra with the Matrix LED headlights. That's very like Volkswagen's IQ lighting, which makes sense because they're working with them on a few projects and it's an overall trend in the industry. You've also had the Ford badge, as with most vehicles from Ford, for the facelift moved from up here and going down here and getting bigger. So the same see on the Puma, the same we saw on the Fiesta and Focus a couple of years ago. Over to the front of the vehicle, you've got these sort of sharper angular sections. It's one of the more aggressive looking SUVs on the road. I prefer a softer look. I do like the look of the Ford Escape more. I like the front ends actually of the Titanium and the Active models in the UK. They have a softer look to them, which I actually quite like. 
But the ST Line and ST Line X are the popular models, definitely with that sporty Ford Edge. What a lot of people prefer. So you've got this much bigger grille here, which looks really great with the Ford badge just there. Front and rear sensors standard, looks really good. In terms of colors, there's six different exterior options to choose from, with the standard being the solid frozen white, which suits the look of the car. This is solar silver metallic, which looks very good, especially with these rock gray 18 inch alloys on the ST Line. They just look really nice. It's quite an understated look, but still has has a sporty element to it. The rest of the colors are all 800 pound optional extra. You've got Agate Black, and that looks nice. You've got Desert Island Blue, which I mentioned on my last review would really suit the look of the Cougar. So that is definitely what I'd go for. I really like Desert Island Blue. You've got new bursting green as well. You've got magnetic, which is your dark gray metallic color. So a nice fair few options there on the car. I really love the blue that they get overseas in Canada and America. Unfortunately, we don't get that on the UK spec Cougar. They get that on the Escape, which I think looks so good for the facelift, but we don't get it. But we do get Desert Island Blue, but even more simple colors like the white and the silver and black all suit the car a lot. So all models have got full LED headlamps and tail lamps with this daytime run light signature. If you want the Matrix LEDs and they run all the way through here, with the eye type looking lights, very clever technology, turns corners, etc., and the heads up display that's in the technology pack is £900, which I think is actually a very fair price for matrix LEDs and the heads up display. You just have to look at what Volkswagen and Audi charge for those types of options. They'd charge easily that for either or the matrix or the heads up display on its own. So well done Ford for that. Always keeping the options quite affordable. Alloys range from 17 to 20 inches on the facelifted Cougar. It starts with 17 inch sparkle silver alloy wheels on the titanium. These can be upgraded to diamond core 18 inch wheels for 600 pound, which looks very nice. Moving on to the ST line, this car here, you've got these 18 inch rock gray alloy wheels, which look very good, very simplistic. If you do ever scratch, scuff them at all, they'll be very easy to refurbish rather than a diamond cut. They're not gonna oxidize as badly and just a great look. They do remind me a little bit of Volkswagen's Valencia alloy wheels. So yeah, really nice and they suit every color of car. So I really like them. They come with the red brake calipers as well on ST Line and ST Line X. Moving up to the active model, you've got the 18 inch active alloy wheels. They are a diamond cut black look. You can upgrade to 19 inch active alloy wheels for a 600 pound option as well. They are exclusive to the active vehicle. However, you can get some SE Line X optional wheels on the active model for around thousand pound. They're the 20 inch alloys. They're available on the active. So there's three different wheel choices on the active. On ST Line X, you get these 19 inch diamond cut black alloy wheels which are very nice look, but I do think I prefer the standard ST Line wheels. You can also upgrade to 20 inch alloys on the ST Line X should you wish. You can upgrade on the ST Line as well. So there's plenty of wheel choices, but as standard, the wheels on each trim look really good and suit the car very well. With these being my favorite, just being very simplistic and suiting the look of the car very well. To the rear of the Cougar, you've got the revised LED tail lamps in a darker red, which look very good. Especially when we're seeing a lot of cars going to clear tail lamps. I think if they've been red before, that same light looks weird if you make it clear. I don't know if that makes sense. You've got Cougar in gloss black spell across the back. Of course, different models have different looks, but you've got twin real exhaust, as you can see on this ST line, which looks very good. kick open function, very good. You've got a parcel shelf that's a thin, flimsier one, but these are very easy to remove, it saves weight. I don't know why you need a big carpeted parcel shelf. Really, this is fine. I never put things on top of it anyway. This does the job and I like this move that we're seeing from many manufacturers such as Honda, Toyota and many more. Got the split level boot floor. One great thing about the Cougar is you can still opt for a spare wheel. Even on the hybrids, it's a 150 pound optional extra for a mini space saver wheel, which I think is excellent. Very good idea to have that. It does move some bits about. This has got the 12 volt battery underneath it here. So it reconfigures things somehow, but it is still an option, which is definitely welcomed.
In terms of boot space, you've got 475 litres in the self-charging and plug-in hybrid models. That goes up to 526 in the normal petrol model. With the seat slid all the way forwards, we get 645 litres of space in the petrol models and 628 litres of space in hybrid and plug-in hybrid. So you don't lose a massive amount. It's a nice square shape. It's not as big as the Tiguan or a few other models, but honestly, it's a decent size and I don't see much wrong with it. I think it's plenty big enough for most people. It's much bigger than the boot you find in an MG HS and also bigger than the Honda ZRV by quite a bit as well. Rear space is important, so let's check it out now. Door protectors are on the rear as well. In the rear of the Cougar, you've got plenty of space and your seats can actually recline as well with these useful handles so you can sit far back, which I don't like. I prefer a bit more upright. And you do also have the bar so you can slide the seats forward so you've got more boot space or have them back and have a bit more leg room. You've got your center armrest here as well. Good quality with cup holders as well. Nice. Two USB-C ports and also seat back pockets as well. So that's really useful. Electric windows. Materials back here aren't as quality as in the front, but they're not too bad. They've got nice little finishes here. And then they do actually have a premium touch here with a bit of leather with the red stitching from the front. Continuing through the back with the Alcantara seats, which are beautiful. They've done a great job with the ST line. The bases aren't the longest, so for longer journeys, adults might not find it the most comfortable. Kids should be absolutely fine. This has got a dark headlining, but it doesn't feel too dark. I'm actually under a tree now and I'm not claustrophobic. You can get a panoramic roof though. It's done on ST line X and it's optional on the other models of around a thousand pound. So that's not too bad. Nice that you can get the option of the sunroof should you wish to have that. If not, it's not too dark in here. Of course, you get a light headlining in titanium and active models. Another Ford feature that I really do love, it's Ford's easy fuel system. It's easy, you don't have to faff around with caps. You actually just put the fuel in and go. Even easier on a self-charging hybrid like this, you don't even have to plug it in. The Cougar is even more better equipped now than it was before with models from ST Line and above, so ST Line, ST Line X and Active having features such as the pop-out door protectors, which is very good for protecting your own door and other cars, the keyless entry and start, and also a very premium feature, which is standard on ST Line and above, is the 12-way power adjustable AGR approved seats. So they are a German back health thing. <laughs> it means the seats are very comfortable. They hug you nicely. The bases aren't too flat, which what you see on the smaller Ford, so like on the Focus, the Puma and the Fiesta, they're a bit more supportive, so that's nice. You've got adjustable lumbar support, your back support and your seats as well. And they're all on a memory settings on the door as well. So that is very great with three different memory settings. So really nice feature, very premium and nice. Also another standard feature on ST Line Above is 360 degree camera. So on ST Line and Above as well, you've got Bang & Olufsen sound system, which is excellent. Look at the 360 cameras. That's now standard on ST Line and Above and most people won't go for titanium. Titanium's actually only available with the 1.5 EcoBoost with the 6-speed manual, which is a nice car to drive. But if you want electrification, you have to go for ST Line Active or ST Line X, but that looks really good. You do have to be very careful with your options to get it under 40K. It's a little tricky, so just be wary of that. The Cougar has stayed pretty similar from what it was before. You do have the new Ford Sync 4 screen though, a 13.2 inch center infotainment screen that we've seen on the Focus before. It looks very good. If you've got all your climate controls, quite easily accessible to be fair at the bottom there. Lots of people prefer physical controls, myself included, but I think this is a very good way. They're always illuminated, so you can get some pretty easily. And you've got these quick shortcut buttons down here, so max defrost in for the screen. Your camera button, that makes the cameras come up very quickly. Parking assist button. And then your drive modes are through there as well. So you've got normal, eco, sport, and slippery. You've got the 12.3 digital dials, which were an option on the pre-facelift. Materials are all pretty much unchanged. They were all very good in the pre-facelift anyway. There's of course a few different design and things like that. I think this screen looks less imposing than the 15 inch screen on the Tiguan and similar to the 13 inch screen on the Tiguan. However, it is more wider, so it's not as high. It doesn't 
protrude as much. That might suit people a bit more than the one in the Tiguan. You don't have Isofix points in the front seat, so Volkswagen Group cars win in that respect. Plenty of adjustment, very comfortable, and there's just more specification as standard now on the facelift. This is the ST line model, which starts at just over £37,000. Of course, the options add up quickly, especially with metallic paintwork being £800. You need to be careful of the £40,000 tax threshold because if you go over that, you do have to pay an extra £410 a year for the first five years for premium car tax. So just watch out for that one. ST Line X starts at just under £40,000. What does it add though? Well, it adds the panoramic sunroof. It adds 19 inch diamond cut alloy wheels. It adds heated front and rear seats and a heated front steering wheel as well front steering wheel. From ST line and above though, like I say, you have the AGR seats. All models have the quick clear Ford screen, which is an excellent innovation. Love that feature. There's so much kit on these cars. Very well done. You get a lot more standard than you do on the Tiguan. Of course, the price isn't cheapest. It's in line with those sort of vehicles. I think you'll definitely enjoy slightly sporty appearance and driving dynamics of the Cougar over other SUVs. So would I buy a Ford Cougar? Well, this FHEV model with excellent fuel efficiency, really nippy performance, it's great. It does sound a little bit strained when you really push it, but only for a short while, and then it kicks back in. Thanks to a 2.5 litre Duratec engine, you have a kind of element of premiumness inside and out, but you still know it's a Ford vehicle. It's not meant to be the most premium. You're not in an Audi, and those little tweaks really help. So I think if you're looking for a medium to larger size SUV for your family, it's just like how you always remember the Cougar to be, but better to drive. The electrification only adds to the performance, only adds to the economy makes it a great car so yeah i would recommend the ford cougar definitely go and take one for a ride thanks again to pi motors for making this video possible as i say all their links are in the description down below